past eight. High time to look, take a look at the newspapers. Rabbi Laura Jana Klausner is here to tell us what's caught her eye. Morning to you. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, before we go through them, let's take a look at the front pages for you now, though. Uh, Sunday Times, first of all, uh, looking at uh, the story, the Prime Minister is going to say tomorrow um, that a full blown RAF offensive against ISIS targets in Syria and Iraq uh, should take place this autumn. He says he wants to destroy the caliphate in both countries. Sunday papers wouldn't be the Sunday papers without a bit of uh, political uh, banter and bashing of each other. This is between uh, Boris Johnson and David Cameron. Boris Johnson is apparently telling David Cameron that uh, he is getting a hard time from George, Os George Osborne and Theresa May and they need to stop, stop it. The Observer, uh, Buckingham Palace, uh, last night being urged to disclose documents uh, by historians. Uh, they say it would finally reveal the truth about the relationship between royal family and uh, the regime of the 1930s in Germany. Uh, this follows publication in the Sun newspaper yesterday, of course, footage of the Queen about the age of six or seven performing a, a Nazi salute. We also know, of course, that an investigation is underway into how that footage was obtained. Yeah, it's also the lead story this morning on the Sunday Express. They've enlisted the services of a lip reader who's looked through that footage uh, from the 30s, uh, and she says this film is definitely not about Nazi salutes. The Queen Mother and Prince Edward are encouraging the children to wave. And let's take a look finally at the Sunday Express story we've been reporting on this morning on breakfast about changes planned for the way that the NHS in England diagnoses and treats cancer could save 30,000 lives a year by 2020. And inside the newspapers, Laura is going to tell us about some of the stories that have caught your eye. We are looking first... Uh, where are we? What newspaper is this? It is The Independent, Independent on Sunday. Uh, picture of David Cameron there. Government gets tough on Muslims who failed to denounce jihadis. Now, we hear a lot about this at the moment, don't we? And indeed, we hear that David Cameron's going to make another uh, speech tomorrow. Just, just, you know, run through your views on this. So, th these previews, uh, David Cameron's speech, and what he's doing uh, is um, raising the issue, which I think is very important and actually very hard to talk about sensibly, about uh, British Muslims and, where, and, their, and people's views. Because you don't want to enter a space which puts all British Muslims together under any kind of banner of extremism. But there are real issues that they bring up themselves. So the question is how to balance that. So he's talking about views that are on the borders of illegality. Mm. So he's not just talking about violence. He's talking about views that deny the Holocaust, uh, that questions Israel's rights to existence, that questions whether men and women should be able to mix, and also questions whether Jews and Muslims should mix. So on those four measurements, three of them pertain to Jews, which is really interesting, and puts Jews and Muslims in this country in really interesting relationships um, and something that a lot of my Muslim friends and colleagues have, have raised with me is, you know, we really need to talk about these issues together. So I think he's right to start mapping out what the details mean rather than just saying you know, awful things that aren't true about the vast, vast majority of Muslims in this country. But there is truth in saying that there are difficult conversations that we have to have. We almost have to practice them conversations about Israel, conversations about Jews, conversations about men and women, so that we can have a more robust discussion in Britain about what is not extremism and what is, what we want to strengthen and what we really want to question. Mm. And at a time, thank God, where we don't have in Britain, you know, something happening, now is the time to look at it. We have 10 years just after from 7-7 and all those issues that it raised. So I think he's doing a good thing in starting to map out the issues. And, but as a rabbi, what occurs to me is, gosh, look at how many of those issues are Jewish Muslim issues. Well, interesting to have your views on that. Uh, shall we bring in uh, another story, though? Let's uh, move through some of them and... Um... Here we've got the Independent on Sunday again. So a new, a new prize here. Uh, small is beautiful in the world of novellas. <laughs> What's all this one about? Well, I would say small is beautiful in the world. <laughs> but um, what's interesting here is this new idea of a prize for novellas, an mm. award. 
And it raises for me the question about our attention span. Are we really able to do huge books? Or does our change in the way that our brains are being wired and rewired due to the internet affect how we read? And I know, for me, it affects my concentration. I'm pretty much an internet addict. And I know that I read differently. Um, so one of the questions is, what is a novel? On the other hand, you have this really fascinating rise in book clubs. Mm. Yeah. So people want to... So it's really hard to work out what's reality here. I think it's a very good thing. I mean, books like Clockwork Orange, The Old Man and the Sea, they count as novellas on the yeah. score of mm. 20 to 40. So fantastic books, vastly important books, would otherwise not have... Well, they received awards, but they mm. would receive this award now. So it's 43,869 words, apparently. Oh, that's... They, do, they that? say that's sort of on that's the board. A statistic <laughs> <That's> the <thing>. <laughs> standing <laughs> out at me. So the, the other statistics in there is that a novella is defined as between 20 and 40,000 words. Right. Um, so 43 is on the cusp. But it's, it's just an interesting thing about what counts as a proper book. Yes, yeah, and, and who are we as readers and who are we as humans with our brains being changed? Mm. No, that is very interesting. Uh, we talked a little bit about schools last time, didn't we, in yes. particular summer. Uh, this is from the Mirror. It says, summer holidays cut to a month, which I assume for certain, certain parents would be terrible news. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, it's come because the, it says that parents told us that after four weeks they want their children to go back to school. <laughs> and what we can see in a children's ten attention span is that actually it's a good thing possibly, that they have shorter summer holidays and that they have longer spaces of holiday in the year and that the curriculum nationally is changed. But this is only in one place, in Lincolnshire. Mm. So in, it's a parent's nightmare, actually. You have one of your kids in primary <laughs> school and another kid in secondary school. This one gets four weeks, this one gets six weeks. Well, so I think like that. They weren't like that. So <laughs> if we're saying there's something about the best way to educate our kids, which is to change the school holiday system, Let's do it nationally. Yes, so it's controversial, that, isn't it? I mean, I have heard before people say, oh, they forget everything that they've learnt. Should we quickly, go to the uh, last one? Yeah, we've let's got quickly time do for this. One more. Uh, we've been talking about the Gulf a lot today. Storm rages over, uh, you know, the open taking place. Should they have done it or not? Well, what I hadn't understood before this <laughs> is that they, we, they kicked off at 7 a.m. and stopped 32 minutes later. Yes. And they must have known the weather in advance. So maybe they should have planned differently that if it was only the second time ever that this has happened, that it's going to finish on the Monday rather than oh. on time. Oh. And as we can there see, we oh, are. Right. there's okay. our live camera. <laughs> it's still raining. That was a perfect <laughs> television <laughs> moment, that, wasn't it? Uh, the cameraman had a, had a plastic bag, effectively, <laughs> over the lens. These are live pictures that we're bringing you now from the open. As you can see, well, there's no-one in the grandstand. There's absolutely nothing happening. As you see, even the BBC cameraman there was doing the right thing, <laughs> keeping the cameraman protected uh, with a plastic plastic bag, uh, which he took off at just the right moment, but we could see still a lot of rain up there. It doesn't look like they're going to get much achieved early on. No, and they said, um, hell hath no fury like a golfer in a gale. Oh, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> it's a very glum face. Of course, it is due to continue today. Thank yes. you very much for taking Pleasure. us through your choices. Lovely Pleasure. to see you Thank again you. this morning. Laura, thanks a lot. Really nice to see you.